second time around. It's a, um, an L12 model from 1946. And um, you got the door okay? All right. Hi, Hi. nice to meet you. Hi. This is our artist who's going to be putting up all sorts of uh, fun Americana things that he does. It's going to be fantastic. Very nice to meet you. I'm just showing uh, this gentleman. Hi there. I'm Nell. Nice to yeah, meet you. I got it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so this is my giant flight case here because I had to protect it on the pallets when we were traveling in Iraq as much as possible. What does it take to get to you? What does it take? What can I do? I wanna be a number one. Can I get it done? What does it take to get to you? It has got a lot of soul. I think that this guitar found me. You know, it's uh, it's um. Let's see, where's my strap? It's up on stage, but uh, well, you know what? I'll just hold it like this. Here we go. You can hear that it has this like a. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. All of these terms, new folk, new jazz, country music, they really mean different things on both sides of the Atlantic. In America, folk means a very different thing than it means over here. And country music in America means a very different thing than what people associate with country over here. So the reason I say good old rock and roll is because I'm talking about an era where there were no, uh, there was not as great a need to categorize music. You could have an Elvis Presley hit that was on the R&B charts, it was on the country charts, it was on the pop charts. It didn't matter. going for something that's a little more stripped down, that sounds like people in a room that were actually playing those instruments and they were actually there, you know, making it happen. I mean, it's not a perfect sound. It's something that sort of is a little bit out when you're up here. But then um, it's got enough life that you can really kind of encourage a soul out of it. You can really get a, um, a sound that... It was, I think that um, it was built to uh, cut across horn sections when uh, they were doing big band work back in the 40s. I was an English major in college, so a lot of my influences are also uh, authors. I love Hemingway, I love um, Faulkner, I love um, James Joyce, and there's, you know, um, I just, you know, reread Heart of Darkness, Joseph Conrad. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things out there that, uh, that sort of can inspire the little you know, thoughts percolating as you're, as you're going along. Hey guys. Sorry. Just one second. I have been playing um, um, my Martin acoustics as well, but this one is really the one that um, I'm in love with now and I take it on tour and uh, which I probably should, you know, be a little more wary of because it's a very delicate guitar. I mean, 1946, that's old wood, you know. I'm really someone who's quite serious about writing all my own material and arranging it the way that I want it to be arranged. And I have very distinct ideas about how I want my band to sound and, uh, and how I, you know, want the music to, uh, to affect people, if at all possible. But my love life is always in shambles. No, 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 don't feel sorry for me. I, I get to rock out on a daily basis, so uh, it's all good. But this is a, this is a song about uh, love gone wrong at a particular time of day. Because sometimes in the morning you're, uh, you're fine with your decisions, and then lunch is okay, and dinner's okay too, but something happens from midnight on with a couple of whiskeys in you, and it's just like trouble ensues. So this song is called From Midnight On. Mm -hmm. 